Allora, eccoci all'inizio della seconda parte del, del nostro pomeriggio con l'atteso intervento del commissario Moscovici che io ho avuto il privilegio di poter eh, intravedere poco fa e vi assicuro che è molto interessante e ci sono delle cose molto nuove. E quindi vi prego adesso di sedervi e passo la parola al commissario. Si può parlare, monsieur le commissario? Si può. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests and uh, dear fellow panelists, uh, it's my great pleasure to, to join you today for this discussion uh, on the Economic and Monetary Union, EMU. Uh, allow me to warmly thank EMUs and the uh, Commission's representation in Rome uh, for uh, this uh, stimulating uh, conference uh, program. Europe is not a topic that traditionally attracts large crowds, but this may change. The need for more Europe has certainly been keenly felt in Italy for the past months. Uh, this is especially true for the refugee crisis, and it is also true for EMU. I would like to uh, focus on two points uh, only today. First, what went wrong with Greece? Second, how to move forward with the report of the five presidents uh, on deepening Europe's economic and monetary union? Uh, the first question I would like to, to submit to the panel is uh, what went wrong with the Eurogroup's uh, handling of the Greek crisis? There is a clear understanding today that the Greek crisis revealed serious failures in our decision-making uh, process. More importantly, uh, this understanding is now shared. Uh, it is shared across the political spectrum uh, and it is shared by heads of states and governments. We have been experiencing uh, these failures for years now, but uh, it took the Greek crisis for our leader uh, to come to the realization that change was needed. And I'm not talking about uh, a cosmetic change or change in 10 years down. In my opinion, our decision-making process failed on three points, and we need to reform it now. Uh, first, democratic oversight. No role has been uh, foreseen for the European Parliament in the uh, European Stability Mechanism. We will partly remedy this shortcoming in the implementation stage, but the Parliament feels that the Eurogroup too often uh, works as a black box and that they take uh, major decisions without proper involvement of European representatives. They are certainly right to think so. Second, a conflicting source of legitimacy. From January to August, uh, the Eurogroup operated a, as a platform for direct confrontation between opposite sources of legitimacy. It was given for all governments around the table that Greece should respect the uh, commitments made by Athens under previous leaderships, but Mr. Tsipras' government uh, objected to this premise because Syriza's campaign platform departed significantly uh, from those very commitments. Therefore, Institutional legitimacy was pitted directly against political legitimacy. Uh, in addition, the legitimacy of the Greek government and of the Greeks' vote in the referendum organized in July was pitted directly against the legitimacy of other European governments. Uh, yet, and yes, the Greek government is accountable for, to its people, but so are the other 18 governments in the euro area. The Greek people need to be respected, of course, but so uh, have the uh, 18 other uh, people uh, in the uh, Eurozone. Finally, we faced uh, tremendous difficulties to express the European general interest. As Abamas uh, pointed out, European governments are unable to act in the interest of a joint European community because they think mainly of their national electorate. Uh, we are stuck in a political uh, trap. In other words, the sum total of conflicting national interest doesn't add up to the European general interest. That's not new, but uh, it is politically significant there. I would even say we need to define the uh, euro area interest. The Commission attends these meetings uh, through me, but is not firmly part of the decision-making process 
contrary to the ECOFIN or, or the Environment or the uh, Justice uh, uh, Council. This must be remedied. Uh, only the Commission can, in my view, bring the value added of expressing this general interest that we must define. We, Europeans, uh, failed to solve this conflict in a timely and orderly uh, fashion because we didn't have the uh, right instruments, whether they are institutional, political, or democratic for this purpose. At the end of the day, uh, each side, whether in Greece or in the Netherlands uh, or in Lithuania, probably feels equally violated by the terms of the agreement. Drawing on this sobering experience, uh, where should get EMU? The report of the five presidents on completing EMU uh, provides us with the roadmap to address some of the challenges I mentioned. It is a valuable starting point that must now be implemented, and there the Commission will play uh, its role fully. Here is my take on it. I'm going to assume that few people in this room are aware of this report. I would not, frankly, blame you. Uh, yet uh, another report on uh, EMU, you might think. Uh, well, uh, I believe that this time uh, things are slightly different. Not so much in terms of uh, contents. Many proposals uh, have been floating around these uh, past few years. But in terms of context, we have seen a shift in political sentiment. Of course, uh, the report is not perfect. Uh, and many within my political family, I'm a social democrat, would have liked it to see more proposals on the social dimension of the EMU, as well as on its political integration. But let's use the opportunities it offers. The report draws a distinction between two separate and consecutive phases. Phase one broadly aims at boosting growth and fostering convergence. Uh, phase two includes proposals to increase European solidarity and to deepen our institutional uh, framework. I feel very strongly that these two phases are complementary and must be considered as a coherent and balanced unit. Phase one identifies a, a set of short-term actions that the Commission uh, is are actively working on, but phase two uh, not to be seen as some distant prospect for the uh, faraway future. Uh, phase two renders the whole endeavor uh, meaningful for the people, for the uh, public opinions, uh, for the uh, member states, for the political authorities. It is what impacts uh, politically uh, and what is going to change values and give value and purpose to the actions of phase one. Three initiatives uh, under phase one are uh, of particular importance. First, we have a job to finish on the banking union. As you may know, the banking union uh, rests on three pillars. The single supervisory mechanism, first pillar, we have it. The single resolution mechanism, phase two, uh, second pillar, we have it. And finally, uh, a European deposit insurance scheme. The third pillar, that uh, we have not yet set up. This is where we are uh, focusing resources now. The report calls for concrete steps towards a common backstop to the uh, single resolution fund. We must create it. Ultimately, the common financial backstop will be guaranteed by national budget. Therefore, what is ultimately at stake here is a concept that we didn't mean until now, solidarity. The appetite of uh, member states, or, or lack of appetite, uh, to set up the European Deposit Insurance Scheme will be an excellent indicator of their appetite to deepen solidarity among Euro area members in general. EU uh, finance ministers had a, a first exchange of view uh, on the insurance scheme last weekend in Luxembourg. To be uh, frank with you, I am moderately heartened by the substance of their discussions so far, but we are just at the beginning of the process. Risk reducing is a legitimate concern, and it should be fully addressed. But it should not be used 
as a kind of smokescreen to further stall on risk sharing. Phase one also calls for the creation of new bodies, both at the European and at national level. My view is that these bodies can be useful and should promote economic uh, convergence, but not duplicate existing surveillance mechanisms of procedures that we have already uh, in our pocket. The report suggests creating competitiveness authorities. I have to say that around the table of the ECOFIN Council, there was a limited enthusiasm uh, when we discussed these proposals. Many ministers indicated that the added value of these new bodies uh, would be questionable and uh, generally expressed very little support in moving forward on the matter. There is also some skepticism uh, within the European Parliament. Further uh, reflection is uh, thus uh, needed here. As far as I'm concerned, I can envisage a useful role for national uh, competitiveness authorities if their mandate is not restricted to examine only wage formation, but is large enough to encompass productivity, uh, which then touches on issues such as education or R&D. We should also be very flexible with respect to the format and not opt for a, what I would call a, a one-size-fits-all approach. The report also recommends creating an advisory European Fiscal Board. This board would uh, provide an independent analysis at European level on how budgets uh, perform against the uh, economic objectives set out in the EU uh, fiscal governance uh, framework. This proposal uh, proved even more controversial with Ministers of Finance. Uh, many pointed out that the priority uh, should be on proper implementation of existing rules uh, rather than on the creation of new bodies. Others noted that multiplying uh, bodies typically leads to dilution of responsibilities. Instead, the Commission should firmly keep its existing prerogative and uh, really be uh, cautious on that, on fiscal matters, and must be held accountable for the way uh, it exercises them. The last proposal that uh, the Commission will put on the table in the weeks to come is quite ambitious and foresees a single representation of the euro area at the IMF. Now that our currency um, has gained a very solid global status with market operators and sovereigns, uh, it is time to move on with the external representation of the euro area in international financial institution. It would have been a, a different game uh, if the 19 euro area countries uh, had put all their weights in the discussion uh, at the IMF board uh, during the Greek crisis, but we were divided there. No matter who will sit in this chair, we will see. What is important is that we ensure that the euro area speaks with one voice and only with one voice. Then let's move to phase two. Phase two uh, includes two highly political initiatives, uh, both representing a, a, a quantum lead forward, uh, leap forward for the EU. The five presidents report first foresees a, a macroeconomic uh, stabilization function uh, for the euro area. This is, uh, you know, uh, characteristically uh, convoluted EU jargon to, to refer to a budget for the uh, euro area. I am a long time supporter of such a budget and will of course make every effort to bring this proposal to life in a reasonable time frame. A lot of questions will uh, have to be answered by them. How will the budget be uh, funded? Work is ongoing on the financial transaction tax or on the EU on resources. Some of the conclusions of these uh, various uh, works uh, strand uh, may be relevant for the uh, euro area as a whole. Another crucial question uh, is the uh, purpose of the budget. Should it promote uh, national uh, and painful reforms? Should it stabilize uh, national economies in case of asymmetrical shocks? Should it operate as a redistribution instrument? These are all open questions at this stage. I expect political discussion uh, to be difficult on this uh, macroeconomic stabilization uh, function. 
this is an extra step forward uh, towards uh, solidarity that some member states uh, may agree to take only if they feel uh, comfortable that uh, it will not encourage uh, free uh, riding. To turn this into a win-win situation, which is what we must do, we must ensure that uh, all Euro area member states uh, commit to implementing structural reforms uh, to modernize their economic structures, such as uh, uh, it is the case uh, in Italy today. The uh, second uh, noteworthy uh, political initiative for phase two is the setting up of a, a Euro area treasury. Again, uh, we are uh, talking about a major institutional uh, shift towards a deeper EMU. As Commissioner for Economic and Financial Affairs, Taxation and Customs, uh, and as a former finance minister in my country, France, I can see a, a lot of synergies between these two building blocks uh, of what should be, in the long run, a future EU Treasury. It will not happen overnight, but active and speedy preparations uh, must be made so that it remains a goal within reach. Uh, some further reflections are needed uh, to this concept. None of this uh, will be uh, possible uh, without heightened democratic oversight. Under the uh, previous uh, commission, the negotiation with Greece uh, on macroeconomic assistance were shrouded in secrecy through this famous troika. The political backlash uh, against uh, procedures that uh, were seen by many as a denial of democracy was uh, strong enough uh, that uh, President Juncker committed to replace uh, it in the future with a more democratically legitimate and more accountable structure. This commission has already uh, departed for, from previous practices. The president himself was involved in the negotiations with the Greek government and I insisted on appearing before the uh, European uh, Parliament with uh, Vice President Dombrovskis to update MEPs uh, on the state of play. Still, many uh, European citizens are critical uh, of the way uh, they perceive as a lack of democratic oversight in general and in particular on matters related to the Euro area. If we are to head towards more solidarity, I find it perfectly understandable that they would require, in parallel, stronger accountability mechanisms. Uh, in fact, I approve of them. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Europe is hit by two crises now of systemic uh, proportions, and it's a huge challenge. Its economic governance is, is under very uh, severe strains, and it is struggling to respond to the most serious refugee crisis uh, since World War II. These are numerous, there are numerous common points into these new crises, two crises. They both uh, uh, stem from European government's inability to reconcile conflicting national interests. They have both exposed deep divisions within the Council uh, and uh, its vain efforts to overcome them in a speedy fashion. They both highlight that European solidarity is not a given, that it has to be build up. Uh, but most importantly, there are both strong indications that we need more Europe. As President Juncker said in his speech uh, on the State of the Union, there is not enough Europe in this Union. There is not enough Union in this Europe. That's why the uh, deepening of EMU is about. Thank you very much.